Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Yeah, so I'll take over from here. So hopefully everyone can um, see these slides. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining our webinar. Um, as you can see, um, we've just experienced a few technical difficulties. It's the first time that, that we're um, doing one of our updates um, via webinar. So this is a little bit of a first for us. Um, but it's rather exciting and absolutely welcome your feedback. Um, just while Diana's left the room, um, I'll take this opportunity to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. Um, so my name is Phil McCarthy and I'm one of the partners here at Old Brewer Amazing Garden McEwen. Um, so I have um, a reasonable amount of experience in immigration uh, policy and law and in fact in a previous life worked um, as a lawyer with Immigration New Zealand. Not so much at the front end of the um, visa application side of things, but more the point end of the iceberg, dealing with um, the nasty stuff like deportations and so on and so forth. So it's definitely much more interesting being involved in, in sort of the proactive side of things and um, making sure that everybody has appropriate work visas um, and assisting employers with that. And so assisting me today is Diana, and um, Diana, um, for those of you who uh, don't know, Diana is our wonderful um, HR advisor and assistant, and more recently Diana has been assisting me with, um, on the immigration side of things, with visa applications. So um, Diana is going to start out today's uh, webinar workshop uh, dealing with the more mechanical aspects of the new a credited employer work visa um, policy and um, and then I'll take over with some of the more practical considerations of what we'll talk about. I don't really want to steal Diana's thunder too much. Um, <laughs> but, well, this webinar is quite timely because um, just recently, Immigration New Zealand has announced key dates for the new accredited employer work visa um, scheme. So um, I really do want um, you all to note those dates as a key takeaway from today. And so, so firstly, the, um, the first date that you need to know about is the um, 9th of May 2022. And that's the date that, um, that the system, new system opens um, for applications and Diana will talk to you a bit more about that and then the other key date is the 9th of July which is when the um, scheme kick starts off for um, the new uh, work visa applications. Um, as part of all of this, I want to touch on in the end about the um, 2021 residence visa, um, which some of you may have heard about in the media and announcements from Immigration New Zealand as well. So, so yeah, I'll um, hand over and um, kickstart with Diane. Actually, before I do, I was meant, um, meaning to say that we're recording the session, um, so the recording will be available for um, all of those who want it. Um, and also, these, um, you're more than welcome to use the um, chat function and Zoom to ask any questions. Now, we'll endeavour to answer as many of those questions probably at the end of the session as they come in. Um, but if not, we'll work through all of those questions and send out an, um, a, a question and answer email or something like that. Yeah, that, that might be a good idea. Okay, yeah. great. All right. Um, so Diana, okay. okay, all right. So everybody knows, or most people who are on our Zoom call today will know that there's been a change, big changes. And um, as Phil has alluded to, 4th of July is going to be the first date that new accredited employers are um, open um, for business but no automatic transition. So if you were an accredited employer now, then unfortunately it's going to be a brand new process and you can start to get your ducks in a row from the 9th of May, 2022, which is the new date that we've been given. And this accredited employer process will replace uh, six temporary visas and 
I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about the process in applying for, onto this new system. Cool. Actually, yeah, just before we move on there, Diana, um, another thing I just wanted to get in there is uh, a key takeaway here is that um, essentially, if you're employing migrant employees, everyone must apply for this employer accreditation in some shape or form. Yeah. Um, these, these three key different types and Diana will get into that in more detail but um, yeah that's that's the biggest change is, is that all employers must be accredited in some way shape or form um, from the 4th of July um, if, if you're wanting to continue to employ migrant workers. Right okay so let's go to the next slide. Right so um, this new system is going to be replacing a number of employer visas and we're just talking a little bit about the time frame so you've got the essential skills work visa the essential skills work visa which was improved in principle and that will be remaining open until next year when the AEWV is introduced the talent Accredited Employer Work Visa is closing very shortly, as is the Long-Term Skill Shortage List Visa, which will be closing on the 31st of October. And then the Silver Fern Job Search Visas and Silver Fern Practical Experience Visas, they have also, will also close well, on the, this, this month, 7th of July for the first job search visa, and the end of the month for the Silver Fern Practical Experience Visa. So just a couple of things to add there to what Diana said. Um, so the fact that some of those, um, those visas, in particular the Talent Accredited Employer Work Visa, and I think, and also the Long Term Skills Shortage List Work Visa, uh, the fact that those visas are closing for applications essentially at the end of this week that um, kicks in some practical considerations which I'll expand on a little bit uh, later on um, but I think from that list from my experience the um, uh, the key visas that these changes are affecting are the ones that are at the top of this list which are the essential skills work visa that will be the visa that a lot of your migrant employees will, will be on and then of course for those of you that are accredited employers um, some of your employees who are earning above that um, 79,000 approximately income threshold um, may have those work to residence visas under the, the talented accredited employer scheme um, so yeah all right okay thanks Phil. so this process is going to involve three steps the employer check is the first where you get accredited, then the job check, and then finally the migrant worker check, which we will talk about in a bit more detail now. So the employer check, there are going to be two levels of accreditation. You'll have the standard accreditation. So this is for employers who probably only ever going to employ one or two migrant workers or up to five at any one time, they will use the standard accreditation um, application process. But if you're an employer that has high volumes of migrant workers, you, you're going to need to apply on a high volume accreditation. So if you have six or more migrant workers at any one time, then you will have to use that application process. And just uh, for the high volume, you're going to have to have additional obligations or requirements if you want to meet the accreditation status. And this would be demonstrating clearly that you're improving pay and conditions, that your pay is above the minimum wage, 10% um, above the minimum wage, and also that you are clearly demonstrating that you're giving a lot of training and upskilling of New Zealanders. So if, you, if you're a standard accreditation employer and you're tipping over to the beyond the five migrant workers at any one time, then unfortunately you're going to then have to reapply for the high volume accreditation before you can 
employ any further migrant workers. So that's just some key takeaways from there. Um, and then the accreditation is going to be initially granted for 12 months for subsequent and then subsequent applications will be at 24 months. So we're looking at about three years all in up. Um, and then of course franchisees and triangular employment arrangements. This is where you may be an employer who is um, a third party to recruiting and employing migrant workers. You will have additional criteria to meet. And some of the stipulations would be that you have to have operated for 12 months or more. Um, you have to have a history of hiring New Zealanders and also increased compliance checks for from INZ. So this could be your health and safety, your employment law regulation, how you how you're adhering to New Zealand employment law. I think this is all to pr protect migrant workers as well. Um, so for the employer check criteria, this for those who have had accredited employer status before will be fairly familiar with this. This is where you have to demonstrate that you're a genuine New Zealand business, that you have a positive cash flow, so you're viable, and that you have no history of non-compliance. You have not had any immigration offences or employed migrants that are not entitled to be employed. And the other side of it is um, minimising risk of exploitation. So this is a very key part of this new process where you will have to have attended specific training modules that uh, are issued by uh, INZ and also training that's um, applicable and available to your migrant employees. So this is where you have to um, go through some modules about employment rights. So this is specifically for those who are going to be recruiting migrant employers, employees. So, and you will have to have very good record keeping to demonstrate that you have complied with this part of the process, attended training modules, and also provided your migrant employees with this training, their employment rights and what uh, they are able to uh, expect from an employer. And these uh, commitments are going to have to be recorded because in your subsequent application, it's definitely going to be one of those requirements that INZ could look at. So for instance, any training that you do or the migrant worker attends, you need to have records that, the, that show that you have applied, uh, complied with this part of the process in terms of lowering your risk of migrant employ employee exploitation. And um, the employees also, you, you need to demonstrate that migrant workers are provided with other information like settlement information, how to open a bank account, getting an IRD number, all the training and qualifications that are available for them that are relevant to their role, and accommodation, transport, information, those sort of things are going to be very important for you to be able to demonstrate that you are settling your new migrant employee. And these commitments will likely be made by specific de declarations on your application, but INZ may dig deeper if they need to, to check for evidence. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that, Phil? Yeah, so I think um, the most interesting change here is um, uh, the demonstrating that you operate a genuine business and the um, clean history regarding compliance. Um, no changes generally there. Um, most sponsoring employers will be familiar with those requirements. The biggest change has been the minimising the risk of exploitation. 
Um, and so, yeah, as Diana said just before, um, what Immigration New Zealand will be looking for there is um, demonstrating that you have offered. There's actually um, training modules available on the Employment New Zealand website, um, which are designed for migrant employees, um, but also um, the people in your organisations that are responsible for the recruitment. Uh, of staff and so there will be an expectation that um, both your recruiters and and your employees would have had that opportunity to have undertaken that training. Um, the first time round um, you have to do the um, the accreditation application, the employer check stuff, that will be done by declaration. So you, um, we haven't seen the application forms in this specific content of those yet, uh, but we expect that there will be a declaration on those application forms uh, where you declare that you will take these steps. Uh, and then what will happen is come round two when you come to refresh your accreditation, there may be a requirement that uh, you'll have to show uh, that you actually have uh, provided those training opportunities. Um, and that's where the record keeping is going to become important for that uh, going forward. All right, thank you, Phil. Right, so then the next stage of this accredited employer process will be your job check. And it must pay market rate. It's key to this. And the terms and conditions comply with New Zealand employment laws. So this is having a, a proper employment agreement that would um, comply with New Zealand employment legislation, policies and procedures, health and safety checks. Those sort of things will be key to um, demonstrating that you have legitimate compliance with New Zealand employment laws. The labour market test may be required and if the job is below the medium New Zealand medium wage currently at 56,160 per annum then you must also check with MSD so this could be a skills match report that you have to undertake but the good news is for those Taranaki employers if you're in the region and you're paying at or above the medium wage in the regions, you don't have to do a major uh, labour market test. Or if you're paying above 200% above the medium wage, or in cities where you're paying above the medium wage and the employee is on the skills shortage list, sorry, the potential employee. Um, INZ have signaled that they will give us more labour test, market test requirements as they move through this process. So hopefully watch the space, we'll get some more updates from INZ on that. Anything you want to add there? Um, no, I think that the, the good news for employers in the Taranaki region is around that labour market test. Um, so if your job offer is paying above that medium wage, there's not going to be the requirement to undertake the labour market test, which is establishing that there's no New Zealanders or permanent residents. Good. Right. Then the last part of the process for this new AEW process is the migrant worker. So INZ are going to be scrutinising whether your migrant worker not only meets character, identity and health checks, but also that the skills and experience that you're looking for in your migrant worker match the stipulated job application, the job description. So you have to be very sure that if you've got somebody lined up, that they absolutely fit the bill in terms of skills, experience, qualifications, etc. Right, I think now I hand over to Phil to talk about the one-off residence visa, which is very hot off the press. Okay, great. Thanks, Diana. Um, so we wanted to touch on this because uh, later on, this residence visa could become an option and, and, and just a practical consideration 
for employers and migrant employers to take into account as an option that's available for them. Um, there has been a reasonable amount of media attention around this. Um, there, the visa schemes are opening from December this year. Uh, and it was essentially introduced by the government because there was a lot of concern around um, the building a number of uh, applications under the essential, uh, sorry, the um, skilled migrant category of residents, which is actually currently closed at the moment uh, due to COVID. Um, and what that's done is that's created a huge backlog in applications which are sitting in the system at Immigration New Zealand awaiting to be processed. Uh, and um, also it's created the the situation where there are a number of people who are on work visas, um, say for example essential skills work visas, who would have otherwise had a pathway to residence by applying under the skilled migrant category, um, but do not currently have that pathway because that option is closed off to them. So what the government has done is opened this new one-off category. Um, and so essentially there's there's a list of eligibility criteria, which you can see there on that slide. Um, but essentially, I see it as the event as, th as three key uh, eligibility criteria. Uh, so first of all, um, to be able to even apply, you, you do have to have been in New Zealand on the 29th of September and hold one of the eligible visas. So generally, if you hold a work visa of some shape or form, and you, you were in New Zealand on the 29th of September, um, you've, you've ticked that box. Then you've got to be able to show that you meet one of the three main criteria. Um, so that's, you've lived in New Zealand um, for three or more years as at the 29th of September, um, or you earn above that median wage, so $27 um, dollars an hour or um, as an annual salary, what's that? 56,160 per annum. 56,160 dollars per year. Um, or your, the role that you occupy is in one of the recognised skills shortages, um, and, and the key to that being it's on the long-term skills shortage list. Um, you are also eligible if you have entered New Zealand more recently, um, as a critical worker under one of the COVID immigration policies as well. But yeah, essentially um, you will qualify if you meet that living requirement of three years or more, or you earn above the median wage, um, or your role is recognised on, on the long-term skills shortage list. Um, so just moving to the next slide. Oopsie, here we go. Um, so, yeah, as I said before, there's, um, there's some key dates to the scheme. The first key date is the 1st of December 2021, and that's for the first intake of applications. Now, what Immigration New Zealand is doing here is giving priority to essentially those who have already applied under that skilled migrant category for residence. Um, or for those who have an existing residence from work application and train. Um, so residence from work that will essentially be your, um, your work visa holders under the accredited employer scheme as it currently is. Um, and they have applied for the residence. So that's the next, the next stage in your pathway to residence. Um, 1st of March 2022 is the next key date, and that's the date that the scheme opens for all other eligible applicants. So you can see what they're doing is they're essentially giving priority to those who've got an existing residence application and train, and then they're opening it up to everyone else who meets that eligibility criteria that we showed on the previous slide. Um, so yeah, the um, skilled migrant category for residents that remains closed at the moment. So um, for your work visa holders, this essentially the, the one-off residence visa essentially remains one of the few pathways to residence that are open at the moment. Um, the other one obviously is that residence from work if you're a credit employer and 
um, you have a migrant employee who holds a, a route to residence visa. Um, there's more updates to come, so keep watching the space and we'll of course keep updating everyone. Um, so the next few slides, we've got some practical considerations here and um, and some visa options and some planning. Um, so Diana, if you could just move back to the visa options. What I want uh, okay. to, I, yeah. yep, that's cool. What I want to do is just talk about these next few slides and collaboration and, and we're going to see that slideshow anyway. Um, but essentially given the changes, uh, there's a few practical considerations around the visa options that you might want to think about uh, in terms of discussing with your employees what options that they have. Um, now this is where it gets slightly complicated because obviously it's up to your employee and what they want to do at the end of the day. Um, and you as an employer, it's difficult to give immigration advice to your employees, um, but you can certainly refer them to an immigration advisor um, or where, where they can go to look at information. Um, but for your own planning, it's also relevant to know what options are available um, so you can plan ahead for that. Um, so in this table here, we've, we've thought about some of those considerations. Now, not all of them, um, but they're perhaps some of the most common issues that might come up. Um, so, for example, if you have and employees who are currently on essential skills work visa. Um, the most likely visa that they will be applying for is a further essential skills visa in the interim if um, their visa is coming up for expiry prior to the 4th of July, which is when the new accredited employer work visa scheme comes into place. Um, now, the key thing to remember there uh, about that is for current essential skills user applications, Immigration New Zealand has waived the um, labour market um, test in most scenarios um, for employees who are essentially seeking to renew their work visa and they're in their existing job position, uh, they're, they're in their existing job. Um, The next consideration is whether or not they might be eligible for a, some kind of residence visa. Um, now, for those employees that are on the top of that list, so they're earning under that $56,000, um, they're not going to be eligible for a, that 2021 residence visa option unless they've been in New Zealand for that three years. So if they can take that in New Zealand for three years, box, then that might become an option for them. Um, jumping down to the next group of workers who are earning above that um, medium wage, um, then they will qualify for that residence visa if they've earned that, if they were earning that medium wage as at the 29th of September. Um, so that residence visa 2021 does become an option for them. Um, otherwise, they may wish to carry on, on um, under the essential skills work visa that they, they would already currently hold. Um, and then there are those workers who may hold current work to residence uh, work visas. Um, so these are the um, migrants who hold a work visa either under the current long-term skills shortage uh, category or they hold a work residence visa under your um, employer accreditation. Now, um, for these workers, um, the option of carrying on on that um, work to residence work visa is very quickly coming to an end because applications for those work visas are closing at the end of this week. Um, but they do have the option 
if they are existing work visa holders um, and they've held that work visa for two years um, to apply for residence and that will be under the um, residence from work category. I know some of these terms get a bit confusing. Um, or their alternative is, is that they can apply for the um, 2021 residence visa if, um, if they've met that living in New Zealand requirement, um, so the three years, or they meet the income threshold, which is the 56,160. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that the key takeaway from this is there's quite a few different permutations and, and options available depending on what each individual's personal circumstances are and what your business circumstances are as well. Um, so I do recommend getting um, specific advice um, about the options that are available for, for your individual workers as and when the um, um, the need arises um, and it is going to be quite good to plan ahead around the visa options over the next six months um, because as while, while we're in this transitional phase it, it is quite a dynamic area at the moment. Mm. So, uh, yeah. so um, yeah I, I've generally spoken to um, the points on these slides um, in terms of planning ahead, so um, definitely look at which of your workers' workforce have visas expiring um, over the next six to 12 months and um, discuss with them the options that um, are available for them. Um, definitely consider um, the available pathways to residence um, for those workers that have that option. Um, uh, one of the um, key points um, that I wanted to emphasise is um, for existing work to residence visa holders, applying for residence now could be quite a good option for them because um, the income thresholds for residency, so the income that you must earn before you qualify for residency, is actually going to increase under the Accredited Employer Work Visa Scheme. Um, so currently, if you hold a work to residence visa um, under employer accreditation, um, that income threshold is about $79,000 or just a little bit over. Okay. Um, there will still be a pathway for residence under the Accredited Employer Work Visa Scheme for high income earners, um, but that income threshold will increase to um, twice the median wage. So that's going to serve the median wage current now is approximately $56,000. Um, that's going to increase to approximately $112,000 um, compared to the, the current $79,000. Um, so it is quite an, a good option for those um, work to residence visa holders to get in now um, while they can type in. Um, so yeah, that takes us to um, the last slide, um, second, last, sorry, second to last slide, <laughs> um, yeah, which is really just planning ahead and what we've talked about before getting your ducks in the road, um, filing information that you may need for the um, employer check um, and the, the, the accreditation stage, the first stage of the accredited employer work visa. Um, as we mentioned before, those applications will open from the 9th of May. Um, and we predict that there will be kind of like an initial rush to get in. Um, so there will be a glut of applications um, at the early stages. So we definitely do recommend getting in um, early so that you're prepared for um, you know, the need, if the need arises after the 9th of July to sponsor your migrant workers. Um, 
as part of our thinking about your workforce needs is going to be uh, a really good thing to do. <laughs> um, you might wish to consider increasing remuneration thresholds, uh, uh, incre increasing remuneration to meet thresholds if you have workers that uh, on the fringes of that sort of the thresholds that we've talked about. Um, and of course, because the information is changing quite a lot at the moment, um, is checking the immigration, see on the website for updates. And what we'll be doing is sending a few links out with the presentation slides to some relevant information that is already available on the immigration museum on the website mm -hmm. about the accredited employment mm -hmm. visa scheme. Um, and of course, we're constantly monitoring the, um, the changes there and we'll send updates. Um, as and when we get them. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, we'll probably be sending out some box seats and information for our clients as, as and when we get them ourselves. So the last slide is um, just a mind map for you to have an overview of the pathway for an AEWV visa process, starting with what, what visas are it's replacing, the changes, as I've covered the three-step process, employer check, job check, labour market test, and then the migrant worker check, and then planning for the new system. So that's just to give you a, a snapshot of what you, um, you can expect in the next few months and, and your process, getting familiar with this process for you. And I think Phil has emphasised, but just to emphasise again, that all employers will now have to go through this accredited employer process. Yes, all yeah. employers who are wanting to employ migrants migrant from the 4th of July um, essentially will have to go through this process. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if there's one takeaway we want you to all take from this session, and it's, it's that one um, is to um, be prepared ahead to get yeah. the accreditation completed. Yeah, okay. And we also want to thank you for being our guinea pigs because we know that Zoom meetings can be very effective, but they can sometimes have technology that doesn't quite match up. And this is really good. And we'll be asking you for some evaluation of this and how we can improve our our delivery of this kind of presentation in the future. And just, I see there's a couple of chats. Um, we will be sending out a recording of this uh, presentation in the next couple of days, as well as the material that Phil has alluded to, the, the PowerPoint presentation and the link to the updated website about all the information that we know that INZ have um, sent out to us so far. Yeah, um, we, we do have a little bit of time. So um, if anyone wants to stay online and send through some questions on the chat feed, we'll keep an eye out for those. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to end the session here and now. Um, and we'll send out an email of any questions that come through for anyone who's got that as well. So um, yeah, if there's any burning questions, send them through now. We'll stay online for a little while. Um, otherwise, thanks for attending.